and I see you're bringing me to the, uh, the next slide. This is very important in your assessment. So when you look at a, at a baby's foot, how do you know it's club foot? You guys all know the mnemonic cave, and it's a very useful mnemonic, but perhaps not, none of those is more important than is Aquinas. You really don't have a true club foot that doesn't present, or that, that presents on day one without Aquinas. You have to have Aquinas. If you don't have Aquinas, you may be more of that like so-called positional club foot. But if it's not Aquinas, it's probably not club foot. It might be one of those like little positional metatarsus adductus that doesn't really have a varus component with it. Um, and so when uh, we talk about the the CAVE acronym, it's important to remember it in that way because that's also the way in which we correct it. So we'll start in that order. So talk CAVIS first. CAVIS by definition is plantar flexion of the first ray. It is a four foot pronation. It is incredibly important to when you look at the baby's foot, the thing that makes the foot look the most normal on that first day is that cavus because everything else looks so crazy. The only thing that makes it look somewhat normal is the fact that, that first ray is trying to get plantigrade, except that is deceptive because that first ray is one of the major problems. The first ray is so plantar flexed that it has now dissociated itself from the rest of the foot. So by correcting that cavus first, by providing a supinating force with dorsiflexion slight eversion to that first ray, the base of the first metatarsal head, you are now restoring the forefoot, midfoot, hindfoot alignment. And what Ponsetti talked about is restoring the calcaneopedal block. So the calcaneopedal block is the entire foot minus the talus because the talus is the center around which all foot correction occurs, not just in one plane, but all three planes. So by restoring the, the first ray up in that normal position, now you can externally rotate and abduct by pushing on that first ray with a fulcrum on the lateral tailor head, and that will evert the talus, taking you out of varus into valgus, it will abduct the forefoot, taking you out of adductus. And then once you get externally rotated enough, you can then talk about treating the Aquinas. What made Ponsetti's treatment so revolutionary is he completely understood the foot and its anatomy and how things worked before he figured out how to correct everything. He had to go and understand the foot before he decided he was going to just say, I'm just going to push here and make the foot look straight. And so that kind of leads into a little bit of the history, if you guys are okay going off a little bit here for a couple yeah, seconds. Yeah, let's do it. Sure. All right. So going all the way back to Hippocrates, Hippocrates described clubfoot. And he talked about serial bandages, and he understood that it was important to overcorrect the foot to prevent recurrence. And then, you know, between Hippocrates and the Dark Ages, all that information was lost. And then you got to fast forward to modern medicine where they try to manipulate these feet again and not operate on, or not, you know, leave them as they were. And they just basically pushed on the foot. And the fulcrum they used most commonly was the calcaneocuboid joint, joint. And they were trying to um, open up the foot through that joint. And it just, you know, we know the foot doesn't work that way now, but they didn't back then. And so because they had failed on these serial manipulations, people were operating on these things left and right. And it wasn't until Ponsetti really studied on this. And Ponsetti's history was he was a surgeon born in Mallorca in Spain. And when Francisco Franco took over and started purging the intellectuals, he fled to Mexico. And in Mexico City, somehow someone from Iowa came down there and they had some conference and they brought him back up to Iowa City and basically said, look, go wild, man. And so he started you know, letting his mind carry him wherever, whatever uh, he could get interested in. So he had tons of work on DDH, tons of work on feet. And it was through his work with stillborn feet where, uh, where he really helped us understand how the foot moves. And so in the traditional Ponsetti method, um, he corrected what he called kite's error. So kite's error is putting your foot or your, your uh, thumb on the calcaneus or the calcaneo cuboid joint where he said, no, that's the wrong place. If you touch the calcaneus at all, you're blocking the eversion. So you put your finger on the lateral head of the talus and you allow the calcaneus to evert underneath 
the talus to externally rotate and even, and even dorsiflex underneath there. So the anterior process of the calcaneus comes up into the sinus tarsi. And uh, there's a couple really good videos of this. Ponsetti's model uh, is available on a video through globalhelp.org. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to YouTube and look up globalhelp.org and Clubfoot, there's a couple really fantastic videos, one of which is, is titled, Where to Put Your Fingers on a Clubfoot, which is a great video. <laughs> um, but that kind of talks about the whole anatomy, correction, history of Clubfoot. Ponsetti, when he published his first paper on Clubfoot was, I think, 19, I mean, I screw up these, these years, so I wrote them down at some point, and I misplaced my card, but I think it was like 1963 was his first paper, and then 72 was his second paper, and it really wasn't uh, until a couple decades after that where he really started to sway people's mind, and that was when his 34-year follow-up was published, and you want to talk about fate. If someone from New York City had grabbed Ponsetti, I don't know that we would have been where we are today, but people in Iowa City tend to stay around Iowa City, and we were able to get that long-term follow-up. So from 1996 to 2006, the percentage of POSNA surgeons who were operatively treating club feet as their primary treatment went from 72% in 96 to 12% in Man. 2006. So to tell you how impressive a career Ponsetti had, he got an above the fold, full page, above the fold obituary in the New York Times when he died. Wow. Man, that's so, you know, you talk about, I don't know how many surgeons get that, much less orthopedic surgeons. Maybe yeah. DeBakey got it. I don't know. <laughs> that's a, um, yeah, I think it's good to know the history. Like once you start reading or, or hearing it, you kind of just want to hear more and more. And I feel like we can, probably talk about this for for a long time but no i think that's um you know it's crazy the impact that he had and and how he kind of revolutionized you know the treatment of club foot and i mean it's just kind of amazing all the all the work he was able to do and and how what he was able to get published and you know the different difference he was able to make yeah i mean he's, he's just a really impressive guy I mean, his stuff for the hip is also equally as impressive a lot of work on stillborn babies. So we thank those uh, families for letting us learn on their children. Yeah.